pour yourself a bowl of cereal, grab a spot on the couch, and join me in my Saturday morning pajamas. Yes, I'm recording this on a Sunday. That's not the point. <laughs> point is, I've had a bad health week, and so I'm a little bit behind. But today, we're going to go ahead and check out the third part in the Netflix Fear Street trilogy, Fear Street 1666. Um, I watched the last, not last part, 1978, um, just over a week ago, like, it was like on a Wednesday or Thursday I watched it, um, so it's been a little bit, but not, not long, not too long where I don't remember what happened. So today we're gonna go ahead, take a look, have a watch, and just give you some thoughts and reviews. Um, so stick around, I'm not too sure how many little clips I'll be recording this time in between, um, but I am going to give a full review at the end, um, and I will warn you if there's spoilers, who am I kidding, there's probably going to be spoilers, so be warned. Okay, so I made it about 10 extra seconds into the recap here, because I just had to go and discuss one thing from the second part, 1978. Why the fuck, by the way, be cursing in this, why the fuck would we take the tree under where it's known town legend that someone was hung under, where a couple or someone died under, you know, back in some of these. Why would we put that tree in the middle of the goddamn mall? Just, I, logic. Like, I know, I know logic doesn't work, common sense doesn't work, no one has it, common sense were common, whatever. But still, what the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna go back and watch more of the movie. You'll hear from me more in a bit. Jack's popping in here. Um, it is now an hour and six minutes into the movie. <laughs> um, I don't think I've recorded much, but damn, I, this part, third part is like very interesting. Like this part has kept me engaged more than the other two. Um, part of that I think is just because it, it takes place in the past. And so one, I just find it really interesting. A lot of period pieces, like especially way back in the past, because there are so many different ways for movies and shows and stories basically to write about that way that aren't as common. Um, as someone who's watched a lot of movies over their lifetime, most of them contemporary, you kind of get an idea for the style of writing, where stories are going to go, you have an idea. But when we put things, when we go into like certain time periods that aren't, they're, st they're still showcased, but they're, um, they're not, not as often. And so I find that it like, oh, okay, so I get surprised a lot more. Um, and I do think they did this part very, very well for 1666. Um, let's see here. So it's, it was done really, it was done really well. It was very interesting. And I'm loving where we're at now because I still have 47 minutes of the movie left. And we're done with 1666, I think, because now we're back to 1994. So I'm really liking how they're wrapping this around. Um, I paused it like not even a minute or two after I got to 1994, once I realized what's going on. <laughs> so really liking this, just saying it was really engaging. Um, I'm gonna watch some more, but I just kinda wanted to stop and say like, oh my God, this is really good so far. And we'll get more thoughts in a bit. I have finished the movie. So really, really loved it. Um, that last 40-ish something minutes where we went back to 94. Super awesome. Like, the the movie was not quite in half, but part of it was in 1666. Part was in 1994. And neither part felt like it was that long. Like, it was still very interesting. And I was like, oh, that was only that long? I thought, like, that was a whole movie there because the pacing was good. Or, on the other hand, like, I didn't feel like it dragged on forever. So, very good with pacing. I like that a lot. A um, few little questions here there. Like, I, I like the um, ingenuity of a lot of scenes. There were a few bits that I didn't, like, anticipate, which I always love. A um, few things, and this is where I'm going to be definitely spoilers. Uh, first off, so you're telling me there is a direct connection, like, tunnel, basically, between Nick Good's house, which is across the street from his brother's house, so how long have those two been the family houses? And do they have more than one child? Because, anyways, but there's a direct connection from Nick Good's house all the way to um, the mall. Like, granted, there's a little stop in the middle there for, like, you know, sacrificial grounds. 
But okay. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, also, why did we not burn the book? Because, of course, we had to have that scene at the end of someone grabbing the book. Look, I've seen Jason Goes to Hell. I was 12. And they, of course, had the teaser at the end with Freddy's claw coming up from hell and pulling Jason's mask under. Because, you know, we have to leave room for Freddy versus Jason. Which happened like a decade later, but still, I know those scenes are coming. And I think I even said in part one, um, wondering how they were going to get this going forward. And I just realized I didn't put my light on, so one second. Okay, now it seems like this is darker? I don't know. So I apologize, the light's off. I Now this seems worse, I don't know. Uh, we will see what happens in post. We're, we're pretending that I'm the director of Manos Hands of Fate and just says... Everything stupid can be fixed in post. Which, if you haven't heard the story of that, basically... Oh, we're shooting at daylight, but if you dark, we'll fix it in post. And vice versa. All these horror things that he had no way to fix. He says we'll fix it in post. And I've never seen the movie, but I've heard tales of, like, the uh, Rift Tracks version or the... Um... Oh, crap. I can't remember the name of it. Mystery Science Theater version where it's like, yeah, no, this is horrible. It's like the worst movie ever made. That's how it goes off of. Um, I've not seen that, of course, we were made. I did see Troll 2 years ago, and I still have the Blu-ray to watch one day, you know, within the past 20 years, so I do have my own worst movies ever made. But, yeah. Oh, God, I hate these shows. Um, but, yeah, overall, I really like the th Fear Street trilogy. This third part in particular, really impressed with. Um, I mentioned before, I just kept my attention a lot. Um, I liked a lot of the choices that were made. Um, it was a little, the, the, the part I had trouble with was when we switched back to 666, we just used the same cast, which is playing different people. And so I'm sitting there going, they're familiar, what do they play in one of the other parts? And I just was having trouble remembering who they were. Because there's like, a core main cast got that, but then all the others like, that weren't the major focus, my brain was just like, yeah, we're not going to have you remember them at all. I also did not suspect the goods were the evil baddies. Like, I was thinking that that um, putrid piece of trash, the, the, the horny guy that was trying to be all rapey, um, that he was actually the one who had framed Sarah. And everyone, I don't know, he had, he had framed the, um, basically I thought he had given berries or some other things to the um, preacher, pastor, religious dude, went crazy. That he had given some drugs to him so he would go crazy and do all this and frame him because he couldn't get with the girl. Way off. But I like the good version much better because it makes more sense in line with the series. Um, other part that bothered me was just when the 94 part, when they're in the mall and they're like in the back room where the emergency lights are going off and that beeping. When you suffer from migraines and other head issues, it takes a it takes a strong will to watch horror movies because you know you're going to pay for it later. <laughs> so it's not too bad. I got up and got me something to eat to help with that. Um, and I'm drinking some healthy orange uh, drink. Um, and I totally didn't have like healthy pineapple drink earlier. Um, yeah, so, you know, Mountain Dew, it, it, it's healthy, right? Oh, no, it's the Kickstarts that are healthy because that's actually orange morning juice. This is just orange afternoon juice. Which reminds me, if you can find the pineapple ones, there's a hint of coconut. One day I'm going to remember to put rum in one of these and just see what happens. But I shouldn't drink that much, and I rarely do. So we'll see if I ever do that. But just a tip from your local, um, your friendly online. Once was a someone who drinks occasionally and like tasty things, I guess. Uh, back to Fear Street. So, oh, other pilot. <laughs> Trying to remember all this. Um, there was a trope of, oh, someone made a um, bulletproof vest. Um, like in Back to the Future, Marty used the furnace door plate, I guess. Um, my mind's going blank on what these other ones were in the past, but I know I've seen various ones where like, oh, the Bible saved me. Oh, the coin my life, my wife, lovely person gave me all that stuff. But it was always, you know, those are always great. Um, this one, I love how she used the Arl Stein books, um, with the actual original covers, because 
those ones I remember reading as a child. Um, but I like that. I was like, cool. You're on the books with all the duct tape, but you live. So I guess that's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So overall, very good trilogy. I'm actually considering watching it all again, but like closer together just so I, I can like connect dots and also, so, um, just because I know, like, this is one of the movies where I feel that a re would benefit from a rewatch where you can go like, oh, so that's how they led, that's how they foreshadowed this part, that's how they led up to this other part, things of that nature. There are some movies where it's like, I'm good, one and done, or one and we wait a while. No, this one I might watch soon, but yeah. So I definitely give this a rating of check it out. If you like scary movies, if you read these books as a kid, uh, keep in mind it is rated R. There's some um, cursing, bit of gore, bit of gore. Like, we're not talking hostile levels, but still, if you're squeamish around blood, maybe not. Um, and then cursing, um, a little bit of sexual activity. Um, I saw worse than Chuck because I watched horror movies since I was little. But I'm not saying that's right. Even though my nieces and nephews did as well because my family's just weird. I like that. <laughs> but definitely if you're squeamish about blood, if you are very iffy about... I don't think there's really any nudity per se. Uh, but if you're if, if you've got sexual activity or if you're going to watch this with children and they're not at the... They're not at the age or they're not at the developmental point where they are going to understand things. Give it a pass. But otherwise, very good movie. Uh, trilogy. Um, check them all out. Um, and if you like this review and you want to check out more, please feel free to like and subscribe. Um, I'm possibly going to be putting the audio from this up as part of my podcast. Um, Saturday morning pajamas as well. Um, you can find that wherever podcasts are available, like, you know, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Amazon, all that, though, since I haven't uploaded for a while, I need to make sure those all work, but they will be there. Um, if you want to go to watercasterproductions.com, that is going to have a link to the podcast website, to where to download the podcast, um, to my YouTube channel, Perido Hedgehog, as well as my other socials, which is Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok. Like, there was another one. All those are under Parado Hedgehog as well. Uh, so you can go check everything out. Again, it's watercasterproductions.com. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the review of the movie. You know, did you watch this? What's your favorite part? Did you read the books back in the day? Or are you currently reading them? What fun memories do you have? Or what mockery must you give to them? Um, please let me know. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing some more of these. Hopefully, just getting my way back into things. Um, so please let me know what you think. Um, again, like, comment, subscribe, bell, wirecastproductions.com. Um, yeah, it's been a while, so I'm trying to remember all the crap I have to show. <laughs> this is not sponsored, so I'm not showing anything today. Yay! Please, someone sponsor me. I need money. I kid. I kid. No, no. Raid Shadow Legends. <sighs> Raycons. I kid. But thank you for checking out. Have a wonderful day. Be awesome to each other.